I'm Larry Walsh here for Chillonomics in the Margins. I'm coming to you from beautiful Austin, Texas, where it is a chilly 92 degrees, which the locals tell me is a, is a break from the heat down here. Um, I'm down here attending the Channel Executive Council retreat. It happens twice a year. Uh, and I had a great discussion this morning with about a dozen or so uh, channel leaders uh, about influencers. Now, influencers is a topic that comes up frequently. Uh, we have this this perception that we need to tap into influencers to help drive opportunities, to shape uh, partner behavior, to build customer consideration, and expedite sales. And, and a lot of that's true. I mean, the research shows that, that opportunities that have influencers involved in them typically close faster, and they typically have higher, uh, higher sale value. Um, but what is an influencer and how should we think about them? A couple of things that we talked about this morning is, you know, there are different types of influencers uh, and no, they're not YouTubers and we have to separate that out from the mix. We also have to separate out the media and the analysts and the other personalities that influence the industry. Um, what we're really talking about are two different primary types of influencers. One is what we will call to be endemic influencers, those that have a stated purpose, uh, a vested interest in the outcome of the sale to their business. And then there are those that are more altruistic or passive. They, are, they influence a sale, they influence opportunities and customer consideration because they're trying to help out a friend, a colleague, a client. And yes, they may sometimes have a vested interest in the sale outcome, but they're really doing it because they're trying to facilitate their own relationships. Now, the other thing that came up in this conversation, which, which I found really interesting because a number of channel people are tasked with trying to tap into influencers, build influence programs, uh, whether or not you should compensate influencers or whether there should be some other monetary form of, of, of incentive. And, and this, again, is something I just find really interesting is that, you know, if an influencer is in there and they're trying to help out, uh, and typically they're trying to help out whoever the target is, uh, that maybe there's other things we should be doing for them to compensate them or you know, help to enable them, giving them access to information, giving them access to resources, um, you know, letting them in on what your plans, your capabilities, your products are all about. Uh, and this helps build up knowledge and that knowledge that gets translated out in the influence. The other thing we also talked about, which again, I also thought is interesting, is making the distinction between individual influencers. And, and, and an individual influencer in this case would be uh, you know, either an individual company or an individual, uh, individual person. Making the distinction between that and, and more of an ambience of influence is that, that there are multiple touch points in the sales cycle and there is this concert of influencers that are coming in and touching the customer or touching the opportunity at different points and in different ways. And the role they play in the influence that the, imp uh, the influence impact that they have will change based on wherever that, wherever the journey is at that point between the partner and the customer or the vendor and the, and the customer. And there's a lot of things to consider here, but the one thing that came, that comes through cloud and clear, is that influencers are still very much a mystery. They are very much hard to get to and you know, hard to influence the influencers, but they are a significant portion of the go-to-market strategy. They do have an impact on partner and customer behavior and vendors and particularly channel chiefs really are interested in leveraging what they can do to help facilitate uh, better outcomes to the channel. Well, that's about all the time I have now from here in Austin. Uh, if you like what we're doing here and in the margins, please hit like, hit subscribe. Also check out our other podcasts, Changing Channels and the Network Effect. And also check out all the great content we have on channelnomics.com that we produce for all of you. Until next time, I'm Larry Walsh.